Hey everybody, PT Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And welcome back to another episode of PT Pop, A Mind Revolution, where I lead you out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time. Today I've got an awesome and amazing artist on the show. Her name is Asia Amor. And Asia is a Cleveland-based artist working primarily in photography and mixed media and collage art. Her work has been shown at galleries all around town, such as Deep Roots Experience and Worthington Yards. And she's also got some of her work placed inside the Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. And she's just an amazing, talented young lady. And I'm really thrilled to have her on here today. Thanks for appearing on my show, Asia, and welcome to A Mind Revolution. How are you doing today? Oh, I was excited when you asked. I'm like, oh, cool. Heck yeah. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Well, you're basically a celebrity. I've seen you. I haven't seen you on TV because I don't really watch TV much anymore, but on your Facebook page and I think on Instagram, you're we're on Channel 8 or was it Channel 19? I can't uh, remember. I did channel three or five. I think it was channel five one day and then channel eight uh, a couple weeks after that. That's got to be exciting. Did Now, did you contact them or did they seek you out? Did they call you up and say, hey, we, we saw your work. We want you to be on our show. So the cool part about working with the Botanical Gardens is that like everybody wants to go to the garden, you know, and there's always people, you know, trying to see what's new. They were like, oh, you've got stuff there. We want to talk to you. So because I was a part of that, they were they were interested. I've got like some other things, but yeah, they really were the people that like lined that stuff up. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that's going to make you feel really awesome. Yeah, it's like exciting because I I love talking about my work and like where it's going. Mm -hmm. And so it was yeah, it's just really cool. It's still a little nerve wracking. I'll give I'll give it that. But <laughs> like it's it's fun. Yeah, it's gotta be fun because I know um I usually have to go someplace. I, I do photography as well, but I usually have to hunt people, not, not hunt them down, but, you know, knock on doors and say, hey, here's my portfolio. Can I hang my stuff in your gallery and stuff? And it, for me, it seems to be an arduous task. Um, yeah. So how young were you when you first knew you wanted to be an artist? Um... So it doesn't sound, I don't know, however, but... I think to some degree, I've always created in some way. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't creating on canvas, I would probably be singing. If I wasn't singing, I would probably be dancing. So like, uh -huh. it's kind of just been <laughs> these different aspects or like different genres or whatever that I've tried. So, so you're a singer too? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. What did, are you in a band or? No, no, I just like I've done like covers and like I sang in my graduation, like those sorts of things. So like oh. I was singing in church, like yeah. Oh, excellent! Where did you grow up? I grew up in Cleveland. Um, I started off in Shaker, and then we moved to we moved a few times. We mm -hmm. moved to Euclid, and then we moved to Maple, and then I stayed the rest of like my high school career in actual Cleveland. So that's like the Glenville. Okay, area. all right, that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. It's funny. I um, my I'm working on a documentary right now. That's pretty much located in Slavic Village, and I didn't know where Slavic Village was. I'd heard of it, and I'd never been there. So I was okay. spending a lot of time. I grew up and I started off in Cleveland Heights and then we moved out in Jaga County. And so I'd heard of all these places, but I have been in Slavic Village a lot. And um, you've got to see this guy's gallery over there. Um, he's got a, he's taken the old Carnegie Cleveland Public Library and converted it into a museum. What? Yeah, he's really this really cool guy. His name is Daryl Schaff. And uh, he's right now, um, he, he's, I think, in North Carolina. A friend of his passed away and left him 40 pieces of African art. 
and he's bringing it back to put up in his gallery and it's just he's just he's like a little kid you have to he's like 72 years old but he's got the enthusiasm about art like all art not just painting or drawing he does he's a dancer and he's a songwriter and he does all these things and I've been spending a lot of time down there with him. So it's it's interesting to hear you, you say you sing and you dance and you do photography and you do the collage art. So you, you would really like this guy. I think you'd really love his museum. At, and and uh, if you ever want to go over and meet him, I'm glad to introduce you to him. I love that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, is anyone else in your family an artist? Uh, my mom is, I would consider her an artist. She probably wouldn't. But um, she done like I remember move, when I first moved out of the house, mm-hmm. me and her went to um, Habitat for Humanity and we revamped like all the stuff that we got. But like she's more like home decor sort of like artist, like she oh. likes to decorate. <laughs> Interior decoration. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's an art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you good at that? <laughs> right. I um you know, I love to decorate, but I'm too indecisive for it to just be one thing. It uh-huh. would probably change like all the time. <laughs> well, I walk into a room and I, I I can take a picture, I can paint a painting, I can write a song, but I I walk into a room and I've it's I have no idea what to do with it. I have no idea where would I put the couch. I don't care. I it's See, really weird. And where you were like, you don't know, I have too many ideas. I'm just like, <laughs> we can do anything. Like, I, I don't want to make it right now. <laughs> well, there's some good money in that. If you ever, if you uh, can get started a business, maybe you and your mom should go into a business doing that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Because my furniture was, I took that furniture two places. Mm-hmm. Like, I was really proud of that. So. <laughs> Well, you know, I know we we were root we're not roommates, but we were neighbors at the Twist Drill Building. You, I guess, you moved out of there, right? Yes, yes. I decided to create a home. I was just like, yeah. you know, let's let's. I wanted to regroup. I wanted to regroup. Yeah. And I was creating more large scale work. Um, and not that I could technically create it in here, but it was just it didn't make sense because I couldn't fit it in there either. <laughs> Yeah, I'm considering getting out of there too because I just, I've got this room here and I thought I needed my own space and it's kind of, I don't go down there very much. I'm only down there maybe once or twice a month. That's what, that's what my issue was. And yeah. like, not trying to be funny, I um I wanted a place where I felt comfortable being at night. Yes. And that place scares the crap out of me. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, you know, I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know how safe it is around there at night because I, I, you know, you go down there and you wonder. You're kind of right on the edge of the bad neighborhoods, I think. Yeah. And you think, well, am I going to get jumped when I go out to my car tonight? Well, you know, I, I don't know what to think, so I don't go down there after dark. You know, and I don't know if that's a smart thing or if I'm being paranoid. Everyone tells me I'm being paranoid, but. I don't know. I don't want to find out. Oh, yeah, same, same. So I was yeah. like, you guys got it. I will be at home. Um, yeah. We cleaned out the dining room, and I was cool with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I love your work. Your work, Um, I saw your work when I first, what I did at Twist is I went around and I, not just you, but a whole bunch of people I met, and I didn't meet them, but I knocked on doors or went over to that other group of studios on the other side of the building, handed out my cards, I never talked and nobody ever responded, but I saw your work. I looked you up and your work is amazing. I mean, it's really bold. It's evocative. It's, it's well thought out. And I'm talking about your collage work primarily. Um, It's so colorful and vibrant. And the nice thing I think about your, your collages is they draw you in and they make you think they make you go, what, what is this all about? And they keep your eyes locked into the piece. Whereas a lot of people's art, and I guess I learned this in school. You probably did too. You want to keep the eye kind of trapped in the canvas. You don't want to lead lead the eye off. And your work does that beautifully. You you um, here. Let me. I'm going to pull up your website here. And for those of you that are are listening, 
uh, I am recording this on video. So on my YouTube channel on, on uh, PT pop and mind revolution and on PT pop, you can see some of her amazing work here. This is Asia's uh, website. Is, is your last name pronounced a more? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's French. Isn't it? Is that your legal name or did you make that up? No, that's my legal name. That's a beautiful name. Wow. Asia. That's Asia. Your first name, your legal first name. That's awesome. That's beautiful. But I wanted to show some people some of your work on here before I ramble on. Now, th this this piece right here with the maze on it is what caught my eye first of yours ever. And but but all of this is, I guess we'll start with with the maze. I don't know what is the title of this this piece. That one is called Puzzled. Okay. Um, that's my, my actual, like, first collage. Um, I have been, like, trying some art stuff. Like, I've done some paintings. I, like, do photography and things like that and started, mm -hmm. like, cutting up the pictures. Yeah. And I made, like, some some stuff that I was like, eh, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I picked up like all of these home and garden magazines and I love flowers. Like, um, floral, like just, they're everywhere. I just started cutting these flowers out. Okay. I found this image of this black lady. I was like, Oh, she looks perfect. Like, I think I wanted somebody like profiled and I'm like, and mind you, the way that I work, I just gather elements that I think that I want to see. Mm -hmm. so, like this wasn't planned out or anything like that and so I'm like okay I like these flowers I'm just kind of cutting this stuff out and um I found the maid I'm like what are we doing like what's happening here I'm like there's a garden around her but like yeah and that maze was like it was perfect for me. So when when I saw it I thought of the Egyptian goddess Isis I think is that is that her Egyptian but I thought uh, I thought there was some significance to Egypt, but that's just me reading into. That's hard. I like, but I love that though. Like I think for me, I don't have. There are pieces where I could give you what I was, what I came up with, like what I what I had thought while mm -hmm. I was making it. Yeah. But I love for the work for people to come to their own interpretation of yeah. the work. Like, what does it mean to you? You know? So what does the maze, does it signify when you create, do you, I mean, the, the, the maze placed on her head is just brilliant because it makes you think like the mind is a maze or that's how I read it. I mean, that's like there's, she's trapped in her thoughts or I didn't even notice the flowers. I I'm so trapped in the maze. I don't really leave the maze, but um, but I did notice in your bio, you 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 use flowers. Flowers inspire you a great deal, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, they they give sort of for me this dreamy, like ethereal feel. And I was just like, I could really create these stories on beds of flowers. And so for my solo series, I was saying like, I want to give these women their flowers. And so I just feel like that's kind of my, my process or my ode is like, I'm giving these stories, these people, their flowers. That's very beautiful. That's nice. Um, let, me, let me get my, let me back out of here real quick. Cause I can't find my notes here. Back to my notes. And uh, so who who inspires you? Who are your inspirations when it comes to art? Do you have an artist that you look up to or admire? You know, uh, my favorite artist, <clears throat> Andy Warhol. Really? Uh, yes, I, I love Andy Warhol. Um, and back to like the solo series, that's what he did with like Marilyn Monroe and like just uh, Liz Taylor, um, like he was just celebrating like their beauty, just but in a in the simplest form, you know. And so I'm like, okay, like I want to give I want to give my divas their huh. their celebration. You yeah, know? you. I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, no, no, no. That's not, that's not what I'm now, you, now, you mentioned divas. Now, you've got somebody in your artwork here that I've been fascinated with since I was a kid, and now I can't find it, of course. Eartha, Eartha Kit, right? Yes, Eartha Kit. It might be in the shop. I have it. I have to update all my. I've got your Facebook page here. Let me find the Earth. This is Eartha, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Yes. I use Eartha Kit a yeah. lot. I use her a lot, a lot. Now, do you know about her in the Batman series, the original Batman series from the 1960s? Yes. She was the first Catwoman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, why did you pick Eartha Kit? What? What is what do you like about her? Um so I love Eartha Kit. Like her personality is just I the beginning. When I was a kid, my grandmother had this book, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it was called I think it was called Tales of a Sex Kitten. And hmm. um Your grandma had that book? Yes, yeah, she had a book, Tales and she would, the never admit, she would never admit <laughs> yeah. that she had it. But, yeah. like, it was down in the basement. I doubt that she read it. I'm sure somebody just gave it to her. But, like, we would be at Grandma's house, you know, Grandma's house. We do it, you know, you do, you read books and all that other stuff. But, yeah. like, it was one of the books that caught my eye. It's all, it was about Eartha Kitt, and it was, like, her memoir. And that was my first introduction to her. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know um, really anything about her until I picked up that book. Mm -hmm. And um, then I started doing like my own research and like finding out about Santa Baby and um, just all of these movies and just like who she was. Like she's just, to me, the the definition of femininity like she's just this oh yeah yeah, yeah. she's she's very feminine <laughs> she's she's the epitome of a feminine um woman uh, i i know that sounds redundant but um um let me find some, i think you've got a couple other pieces with her i'm sorry i'm going through your do you mind if i go through your facebook page here go through go through because go through, go through. there was some other ones you had with her and of course, now I can't find him right here. Yep. yep, that's her. Yeah, her eyes too. Her eyes are very powerful. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so I have this thing about um, faces. Like for the longest time, and um, I just kind of this recent piece that I just put out, I was like, I have to get away from faces because, like, I. I'm obsessed with like certain faces, so I'll use them in a bunch of pictures. So, like you said, like I have a bunch of pieces with Eartha because, like, I just love her cat eyes, and so that's why I also I added this little black cat at the bottom because I'm like she was the first cat woman. Yeah, like she's very she's very feline, like you know. Yes. Yeah. And so, so it, it's so as I look at your work. I don't know if this is an accurate um, interpretation, but I notice you you depict, and I haven't seen all your work, but you you depict a lot of black women in your work. So, are, are, is that what you talk about? She art, and and the yes. the power of femininity and the power of the black black female figure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Really, for this particular um, exhibition, and like for my work specifically, um, I just want to be able to celebrate the women that look like me. Um, okay. I want to be able to, like, the same way that I said, you know, Andy Warhol decided, like, this woman is beautiful. Like, this is this is what I think beauty is. Mm -hmm. And like, I wanted to be able to show people, like. This is what I think beauty is. This is where our divas or like our queens or whatever started. And so like show that in an artistic and um, dreamy form, you know? And so like, I just wanted to, for me, I just want to, in a very simple way, celebrate it, like make it. Yeah, and I I think you I think you pull it off really well here because 
Um, let me go back to your web page here if I can find it. I mean, can you see your website again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you've got, I don't know who the, this, this um, lady with the that flower. Was based on, um, Na uh, that was based on a picture I saw of Naomi Campbell. Okay. But it reminded me also of Earth and Kit as Catwoman because yeah. that's what she was dressed as. Yeah. So uh, for that's... me, it's more like playful. I want like playful artwork that like informs people like or makes people think like, well, who is this person? You know, like most people, at least most people that I, I don't know, they don't really know who Diane Carroll is. At least mm. in my generation, sure. they should. Most people don't know necessarily who Josephine Baker is, but like if you if you put them in these these beautiful forms and like put them in front of people, to me it makes people think like, well, who is this face? Like, mm -hmm. why should I care? Well, I think your handling here of Jimi Hendrix and Malcolm X is just amazing. Um, Thank you. Because this Jimi Hendrix, I mean you've got the recurring theme in all your work of the flowers. And I've actually just noticed it since I, since we started talking and I read your bio, but the, the use of kind of the psychedelic era and the flower child and the flower power stuff from the sixties and the color schemes you've used here are just, just fascinating. And, and you. the picture you selected of Hendrix, just looking right at you from, from, whoever the photographer was that took it, that is just, is a great placement there of that. Why did you pick Hendrix? Are you a Jimi Hendrix fan or? I love Jimi Hendrix. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. And this was actually for, um, a 420 exhibition. Um, and what's hilarious is that I was trying to think of like, you know, something cool to do and i was like okay like i love hendrix what is he you know he's got the purple haze mm -hmm. i'm like but how mm -hmm. can i incorporate that with flowers so i found some pictures of some purple haze and like if you can see i don't know if i actually made it possible to like zoom in but like those are actually purple haze buds that i individually cut out and like paste to the background, but I wanted these other flowers, the actual flowers to almost look like these spaceships that are like <laughs> around him. Yeah. And legs. yeah so what, and, so those are little, those little tiny, you cut all yeah, those hundreds yeah. of little, you cut all those out. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to make that? Oh man, that one, I was working on my solo show during that one. Ah, that probably took like a couple of weeks. Have you shown that to the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or anybody like that? Or did, did I they... haven't. What's crazy? That piece sold the day of the show. Oh, it's gone. You don't have it anymore. <laughs> nope, I don't have the music oh, anymore. Man, that's beautiful. I don't have the Malcolm X music anymore either. Now the Malcolm X. <laughs> now it, that's you know he was um, a well-known activist in the '60s and and. I've read things about him that the things you heard about him weren't necessarily true. So how did you pick him? And do you know a lot about his politics and things from the sixties? I do know a lot about his politics um, and things like that. I will say the reason that I picked him though, is that I had um, the privilege of meeting his daughter oh. and like, she was just so sweet and so welcoming. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, in her home like we stayed with her and she was just you know talking to us and like giving us all this like amazing knowledge and so it was just like a, an amazing time and wow. it felt like being amongst like you know this this woman is a part of history and um yeah i just wanted to to give my thanks for that and so that's kind of where that piece came from you know it's so well composed and I'm looking at the gold. It's almost like a halo around his head. Is that gold leaf? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Was it meant to look like a halo? Yes. I wanted, I, I called it St. Brother Malcolm. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you've got these other petals or these flowers um, in rows. Um, 
it's more of a rigid piece where it seems like it's very uh structured and um is there is there a reason why you made it so i i know what the word is i structured is what I, all i can think of but i mean like i it felt very serious like mm-hmm. i almost wanted it to feel like um his own sort of like flag like you know oh, he was yeah. about order you know what i'm saying yes, like yeah I wanted it to feel like this is he's important, you know, and I wanted to signify that with the way in which I went about. It almost has an Asian feel to it. Asian, if you're familiar at all with Asian art or Chinese art, um, for some reason it has that, you know, when you see those, uh, I think I should know this because my teacher in high school was, Taiwanese and she tried to make us paint like China Chinese uh Sumi ink paintings for like four years. It was horrible. But um I learned a lot. But <laughs> that's so cool. And I love I'm looking at all the art in your background. I see like these the four guys. I'm interested in that piece. Are you talking about me in my background yeah. here? Oh, that's uh-huh. the beetle that's the Beatles behind me. I, that's not mine. <laughs> The, the other stuff, like I've got a painting here. There are other stuff you see there, um, sound panels, the dead and the echo in the room. They're not mine, but I've got a couple paintings in here that are mine. It's colorful, man. Um, so this, this middle one is a self-portrait, right? Yes, that is a self-portrait. That was for um, She Art last year. Um, she had last year was um, it was themed around the cult classic Baps with Halle Berry, mm-hmm. um, and so basically what we were asked to do was create a piece embodying what we felt a Bap was, and so I decided to make myself make myself a Bap. What what is Bap again? Black American princess. Ah, okay. And Halle mm-hmm. Berry was another cat woman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And she's from Cleveland. She is. Yeah. She is. Love Halle. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really. I mean, uh, so what? So, Black American princess. So that there must be connection. So, um, I'm guessing you like to. Is the money? Does the money signify something that? So wealth the, or so the movie BAP was um is about these two ladies who they wanted to win ten thousand dollars and be a part of like this this movie essentially they wanted to be movie stars and so instead of doing that they ended up getting talked to by this guy who was like well I can take care of you but we can go to this house. It's, Essentially, a living a life of luxury and wealth easily. But and they're so, just they're, they're they're kept they're kept women. Yes. They're treated like treated like royalty. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And so I was just like, oh, you know, this is cool. Some people um, they painted um, scenes from the movie. Um, other people did like really cool calligraphy and I just wanted to like I don't know I'm like I feel like a bat so I feel like I could be a bat <laughs> <laughs> you find the right guy you probably could be that's it um <laughs> I just there's this guy pulling down his lip oh he's got a tattoo in there so this is your work this is your photography yes 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 and so this um, is what a single single light, a single spotlight. Um, yeah, I did some single spotlight work. Um, he's a model. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from Cleveland. Okay. Um, I know he does some bodybuilding, but um, when I first got the studio, I was doing these things called uh, Let's Shoot Sundays. And so you could come in and for like a small fee, like I have a background already placed, but like, you know, we just shoot for like yeah. 30, 45 minutes. And so this, he came through and we did this. And so he wanted to do more of like a, um, what's the word? Like male 
sub. Submissive. Submissive. Yes. Yes. Okay. I decided to leave the not so risky ones for not, for, not suitable for, for work. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so the I guess uh, those are the cool ones that I was like, okay, we can post them. Well, I think you're on the right path. I mean, if people are contacting you from the news stations, local news stations, that's great because they obviously know about you and they, they're aware of your presence, which is a huge step because um, it's really hard to get the attention of the news stations. I've okay. I've tried, um, and it's not for my artwork. I've tried to get people to be in my documentaries from like Channel 3 and stuff, but I didn't didn't have any success. Can you see your Instagram page? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got, I've got it up here. And I, I can't remember this guy's name. He's from Channel 8, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, That's Kenny something. That's right, Kenny. Yeah. And so what this is your Cleveland Garden uh, mm-hmm. show? My, um, in Bloom. Uh, this is actually part of my solo series. Um, that I did in 2022. So this series was titled In Bloom. And so these are, you know, the pieces that I've been showing that like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, I I think this this has been, this series has been in a few places. This series has been to current. This series has been at... I want to be It was at the Cleveland School of the Arts for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, for women's history month, yeah, it's been a couple of places. But yeah, but yes, uh, art in bloom with the uh, Cleveland Botanical Garden. Oh, here you go. Okay, and it says, uh, "So where was this? Where is the the showing located?" Or where um, where the original show was? Yeah, I mean, is this like in a building? It must be in an, in an art community. It looks like a some type of modern building. Oh, this is in the Cleveland Botanical Gardens right now. Oh, okay. Now that's down. Isn't that down near University Circle? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. And it's right across from a CMA. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was someplace else. I thought it was further down MLK, further to the north. Maybe I'm oh, thinking. That's, uh, you're thinking of the cultural garden. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and this this piece. I mean, you've got some great talent here. Just the way you um you break this up. I'm sorry if I can sit there and, and adore your work, <laughs> but <laughs> it's like it's you've broken up. You've got the rule of thirds working here. You've broken up the blue flowers with this golden moon with this light blue is that a butterfly or another pet flower petal so there are, those are all flowers and so what it was was it looked like a flower that was kind of to the side but mm-hmm. it looked like a bird to me and so that's what i used them as yeah like yeah so you've got is this a track are these track stars doing the doing the long jump Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that is the first one is uh I I hope I said her name right. Shakari Richardson. Okay. And then I have Jackie Joyner uh-huh. and then um uh Wilma Rudolph. Yes. And why did you choose to put them in black and white? I feel like all of my um I don't know how can I put this. I try to use black and white for my subjects just because like if the background is so vivid, they stand out. Mm-hmm. Um but what I like to do too is like I use forget me not to kind of like highlight them as well. But I just love the way they look while they were like mid stride, but like mm-hmm. Shakari, she's she's the youngest, obviously, of um of these women. So I had her starting last, 
And so it looked like she was just about to get started. If you see like her leg is like, all right, we're about to get ready. This woman, like she's from the past. I'm like, I'm like, she's already running. She's, she's flying. Like she's, she's got it. And then this last woman, I was like, she just looks like she's just trying to finish her race. And so for me, I really just wanted to create like this really cool sort of dream, dreamy sequence. And um, mm-hmm. I'm like black women in the forest running through flowers at night. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you and you've created a great, you've created a, de- a field of depth too with, you've got the flowers in the foreground down at the bottom. And it looks like the ladies are jumping over the flowers you just created so many different aspects. Like I said, your work keeps you uh, engaged and locked in the canvas, which is, which I think is hard to do to keep someone interested. You've got so many things to look at, so many different, just, I think it's a stroke of brilliance where you put this lighter flower in front of the moon to kind of make it look like it's behind. So it creates a feeling of depth. <clears throat> I said I was trying to give like um like layers, you know. Yeah. Like these are all different pictures that I've isolated and I created it mm-hmm. because at first it just started out as the background of flowers because I knew that I was working with a night sky, but I had no idea what I was creating at the bottom or like what it would really turn into. And so what I ended up doing is like I took a picture of what I had already collaged on the canvas Mm -hmm. and I just started like building my story and what I like, what elements I wanted from there. And so I found some forests and I cut them out Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you can't tell, but like I had to whittle, (laughs) I had to whittle those holes and make sure that like you could really see, see like through the trees and yeah, but it was a lot, I love that piece. It was a lot of fun making that. Yeah, the colors are amazing. So, how do you go? How did and you may have already touched on this, but how did you go from photography to doing collages? I mean, what 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 was your initial inspiration to go into this medium and work in this medium? Um. Let's see. Honestly, I was I've I've always been like this person that wants to take things a step further. And so I was taking pictures and I love photography, but like and I found like some pretty cool success with it, but I think after a while of like working as a photographer, I got bored with photography. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, I'm sucking all the creativity out of it. Like, you know, obviously you're happy to be working and getting paid, but like, this is not what I, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Sure. So I wasn't able to create um, in the way that I wanted to. And so I just kind of found other ways to do it. Yeah, that's... It, it, I find photography gets kind of boring too. I've been doing it for a long time. It's like after a while, it's like I don't know. Oh, what this is a this is like a slideshow. You've got oh, great. Oh yeah, that's all I'm like <laughs> the stuff that I've done digitally. You've got um, great... I started dabbling. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying this. this I started dabbling uh, with stuff digitally as well recently. You've got Grace Jones in some of in one this one piece. And I was trying to find her again. Mm-hmm. And you've picked a lot of really prominent um uh black artists mm-hmm. and, and political figures, very strong mm-hmm. uh, political figures. Oh, there she is. That's Grace Jones, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. So this is entirely different from everything else. You've got you don't have flowers in this. Is this digital? Is this something you did in Illustrator? Um, oh, there are flowers down there. Uh huh. 
and then you've got purple polka dots and pink polka dots and uh it's just very stunning it's it's almost like a comic book type feel to it Listen, you know who else is? Um, I love Roy Lichtenstein's um, work as well with mm-hmm. like dots and things, and so that that's really where that stuff comes from. Um, yeah. Oh, good. Okay, I'll get out of there now. So, you went to try C in the Cleveland State for a while. Mm-hmm. I went to try C for liberal arts. And I um, also got a certificate in ophthalmic assisting. And then I went to CSU for a while for film. Um, but I didn't finish because I got hired by Fox 8 and decided to drop out. Oh, do you work at Fox 8 now? No, 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 no. No, I work for Fox 8 now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. If you have a, an in like that, that would be amazing. Yeah, you know what? They um I I did what was it, vacation technician for them and um it was almost like amazing. I kind of just like took a risk and like applied because I didn't think I was gonna get it. It was just kinda like I don't have anything else to apply to because as a film major and like at a job fair, films aren't coming up to the job fair like, hey, yeah, you want to work on this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I guess I'll apply for Fox 8. And um, I went to high school at Horizon, which is right next door. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, that might be kind of cool. Like, I've always imagined, like, I could work there. And uh-huh. um, I had already been very familiar with uh, camera work and things like that and so they liked me and they hired me as a vacation technician and so I worked for the holidays and it was a really really fun really educational job but I realized because I thought it was my dream job that it wasn't (laughs) so did you operate a camera there yeah I actually did um if you go to my personal page I've got a video where I'm operating sort of the the robotics, but I'm able to like count them out and I was able to like cut some of the news stories and Mm. yeah, it was was a lot of fun. I should, I wish I'd known that I was looking for someone to run camera for me in my new documentary with that I'm making. I was telling you about Islamic village. Oh yes, yeah. Listen, man. I've I've been out of the game for a long time, but I've been saying like film. I would really love to get back at the top. Oh yeah, I mean I'm I'm more into vi- video now, and um, because like you said, I got you know you get bored with one thing, and still photography and telling a story with with video is is a lot more challenging and fun. Uh, putting it all together, so. But um, let me see here. So your website is um, artamorestudio.com, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you want to check out Asia's work, uh, go to artamorestudio.com. And then on Instagram, I think it's the same thing, isn't it? It's, uh, yes, artamorestudio on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would just, I'm trying to think of what else. And then you've got a show coming up, right? Um, I have a show opening in August in Atlanta. Um, I just had a show that opened. It's a group show. Um, but I had a She Art open July 15th as well. So is She Art your, the name of your work, or is that a, a, a gallery or something? Excuse me. She Art <laughs> is um, it's an annual uh all women of color exhibition that happens at Deep Roots Experience. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, it's annual. So yeah, this is the fifth one. Um, but it's a group show. Okay. It's a group show. It's about, um, typically made up of about 15 and 20 black and brown uh, women and black and brown meaning uh, mm-hmm. black uh, Latinx indigenous women. Excellent. And you said you've got one in Atlanta? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was invited to do a show at Mint Gallery. 
Um, and this would be my second show in Atlanta, actually, which is like, I'm, I feel super blessed because oh, I was wow. saying I wanted to do more out of state shows, and mm-hmm. God was just like, all right, this is what you said. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, this one is a group show. It's called Found, and it's um, curated by um, a really cool tattoo artist um, and young lady named Uncle Bree. And she is, um, I want to say she's out of Atlanta, but I could be wrong. And it's but called yeah. Found? Mm-hmm. It's called okay. Found. Now, how and did I'll you, be posting more about that. How did you get involved with I mean, do you... I mean, do you I don't know if you know how fortunate you are that you're getting discovered and you tell me you don't know the business side of it. So I think you must, you must know that your work is so strong that people are like, hold on, we've got to talk to this lady. Do you know what I mean? I feel it. I, I, you know what? I, I, I definitely feel what you're saying. Um, I feel very blessed. Um, and I also know that it is really the people who I've been fortunate enough to find myself around. Yeah. Yeah. Networking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Um, just making sure that I um, am like creating like meaningful relationships. And I think that's really how this thing has been able to be like what it is because you are so right like the business side it, it, it's it's believe me i'm surprised as well <laughs> oh no i mean I'm, I'm not surprised i i'm not surprised because your work is strong very strong but i just know for myself i i write i do music i do all this stuff and it you know it's very hard to get anybody to pay attention, especially now that everybody's an artist because everything's digital. And, you know, when I was growing up, art was done with pens and pencils and paint brushes. There was really no computer art, but now everybody and their mother is an artist. And so it's That's like, right. you say, Oh, I'm an artist. And they're like, okay, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't mean the same thing today. So I think your work stands out above and beyond other people's because it, it is, it, it is very powerful. And I think it's it's very beautiful. And I think you've you've got really something going for you there. And I would just keep riding the wave because you you may not have to worry about the business side of it. But I would suggest if you do get more success, you might want to have a business manager, maybe your mother or somebody take care of the finances in case you do happen to get it big, because there'll be there's a lot of snakes in the grass out there looking yeah, to rip you off. But yeah. But I, I really am um, looking to expand um, the way in which I create, but within the style that I've that I've sort of cultivated. Excellent. Well, yeah. you, this has been awesome. I'm so glad you took the time to talk with me, and uh, um, I wish you all the best of luck. You know, and what you do down the road. And yeah. I signed. I think I signed up for your newsletter. So I'll probably get something about, I think you have a newsletter. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I hope you got, I, I just sent one out, I think right before she are in a couple of days. Um, and I'll be sending out something real soon to um, about what's coming up because I'm opening up a shop um, by the fall. Cause I've got like merch and stuff. Like people don't have to create, always collect, um, art like you know there's other stuff that you can buy a shop online or a shop uh, somewhere around town uh definitely a shop online yeah yeah there's not low maintenance yeah but yeah thanks so much for being on here today yeah okay. you've been great you've got beautiful art check out asia's artwork at artamorestudio.com and artamorestudio.com on Instagram as well. I'm not not .com, but um, it's just Artamore Studio on on Instagram. So, thanks so much, Asia, and uh, you have a great night. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Right, Asia, thanks so much for being on PT Pop Mind Revolution today. If you want to see more of Asia's work, go to artamorestudio.com. And if you want to check her out on Instagram, go to Art Amore.
Just look for Arta Moore on Instagram. Asia's just got an amazing gift for colors and composition, and you'll really love for work. Check it out. So I'm P.T. Pop of Mind Revolution. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And remember, all we have is each other. Take care.